parasternal views are best achieved by positioning your patient in the left lateral decubitus position and placing the probe in the third or fourth intercostal space to the left of the sternum. The parasternal image long axis view of the left ventricle is acquired with a probe marker at approximately 10 o'clock pointed towards the right shoulder. Here's how the probe looks for the same view in a baby. With this position, you are aiming to keep the interventricular septum in a horizontal plane perpendicular to the ultrasound beam. In this view, the left atrium, LA, mitral valve, MV, left ventricle, LV, left ventricular outflow tract, LVOT, and aortic valve, AV, interventricular septum, and right ventricle, RV, can be interrogated. 2D imaging is performed first. Here's the left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, and aorta. After 2D imaging, this is followed by colour Doppler over the mitral and aortic valves. In this echo, the colour box is over the mitral valve, and in this example, it's over the aortic valve. The colour box should also be placed over the interventricular septum to look for ventricular septal defects. Without moving position on the chest, tilt the transducer inferiorly towards the patient's right hip. This will provide the anterior and posterior leaflets of the tricuspid valve. The right atrium and ventricle are also seen. Apply colour Doppler over the tricuspid valve as shown on the right to check for any tricuspid regurgitation. There is a physiological degree of tricuspid regurgitation as shown by the blue jet in this example. If there is any tricuspid regurgitation, then this view lets you obtain a continuous wave Doppler for the tricuspid valve gradient. Next, tilt the transducer anteriorly towards the left shoulder with the probe in the same position or rotated slightly clockwise. This will profile the right ventricular outflow tract, pulmonary valve, and the main pulmonary artery. Any abnormalities of the pulmonary valve can be well profiled both on 2D and colour Doppler imaging. The pulmonary valve annulus diameter is also best measured in this view. An accurate pulmonary valve gradient can be optimally achieved with a continuous wave Doppler. Moving on now to parasternal short axis views. The transducer should be kept in the same position on the chest and rotated 90 degrees clockwise. Here, the probe marker is at approximately 2 o'clock pointed towards the left shoulder. Here's how that probe position looks like in an older child. With this position, you are aiming to keep the interventricular septum in a direct short axis plane. This will allow you to view the aortic valve in cross section and see the right-sided structures wrapping around the aorta in a superior short axis plane. In this view, this is the left atrium, LA, and then the right atrium, RA, and tricuspid valve, TV, are seen to the right of the image, followed by the right ventricular outflow tract, RVOT, anteriorly. The pulmonary valve, PV, main pulmonary artery, PA, and bifurcation of the right and left pulmonary arteries, RPA and LPA, are seen to the left of the aorta. First, we examine these structures using 2D imaging, followed by colour and spectral Doppler. Here you can see that there is a tri-leaflet aortic valve and unobstructed right ventricular outflow tract. We can also see the interventricular septum by sweeping the probe from the base to apex of the heart as shown in this video. This is a good view to assess for ventricular septal defects, which we'll cover later. The short axis or radial function of the left and right ventricles can also be assessed. Here's an example with the aortic valve seen here. Again, the tricuspid valve, right ventricular outflow tract, and pulmonary valve are seen. The parasternal short axis view allows for the coronary arteries to be visualized. This video on the left shows the left coronary artery, LCA, in 2D. The still image on the right shows colour flow within the proximal left coronary artery. Here, the echo video on the left shows the right coronary artery in 2D. 
The video on the right shows colour flow in the proximal right coronary artery. Next, the transducer is tilted inferiorly and leftward towards the apex of the heart. There are three main short axis images that are acquired. The first is at the basal left ventricular level at the level of the mitral valve. This shows the anterior and posterior mitral valve leaflets as well as the inlet portion of the interventricular septum and the basal aspect of the right ventricle. The second image is obtained with a further inferior tilt below the mitral valve. This profiles the papillary muscles and the mid portion of the ventricular septum and is helpful to assess for muscular ventricular septal defects. It is also a helpful view to assess short axis left ventricular function as well as the motion of the interventricular septum. Septal flattening in systole suggests that right ventricular systolic pressures are elevated, whereas in diastole it suggests that there may be volume loading of the right ventricle. Lastly, the third image is acquired with a tilt towards the left ventricular apex. This view assesses apical function and excludes apical muscular ventricular septal defects. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.